Good morning, evening, friends. Oh, yeah. Here's your friendly announcer. And I got some serious news to pass on to everybody. And what I'm about to say could mean the world disaster. It's too early. All right, good morning, good afternoon, good evening, family. Welcome, 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 welcome to the mental house with me, your host, Khadija. You know, we're going to try something. Well, let me say this first. I know, you know, I miss y'all. And when you don't hear from me making a couple videos or in a few days, um, I get burnt out sometimes and I'm working on a website. So when we get, you know, sometimes I have to take a break from YouTube because with YouTube you have to figure out what's going to go and what's not going to go. So for all of y'all who have been loyal to the channel, I really appreciate it. As a matter of fact, somebody said I should do... Um, cause I always say, I, you know, I, I want to appreciate the people that rock with me. Um, and so what I'm going to do though, is I'm going to take my longest subscribers. When I find the one who has been rocking with me the longest. And if y'all want to help me with this uh, process, just tell me when you start following. And I'm going to have a, a prize of a hundred bucks. For the person who um, is the longest subscriber. And I'm also going to announce it. Okay, so let's get that little housekeeping out the way. So I thank you all for, again, being out there. And this is like one of the hardest um, things. Because I always ask myself, and I'm going to ask y'all. For those of y'all that remember, how many of y'all was alive when Malcolm got assassinated? How many of y'all can remember small bits and nuances of what happened of that day? Um, like I said, I was a very, very small person. And it was trauma because I remember my dad who ran Muslim Mosque Incorporated here in Milwaukee who has gone on and passed on. His name is was Brother Ali. But he um, just, my mother decided to go to church that day. I think her and my father was having beef with each other. I'm not sure. But she went to church that day. I just remember us fluctuating back and forth. And he came into the church and got us out of there. He was so frazzled. And all I can remember um, was, they done killed Malcolm. They done killed Malcolm. And those words still ring in my ear today, 59 years later. That goes to show you how the human brain is just like a big computer, a recorder. And you got to get some of those files out. You really do. Um, because, um, you know, I know everybody knows the story. And I think one of the most prolific things for me, the thing that make me the saddest is just how much he was a tortured man. You know, we talk about, you know, people that were involved in the civil rights era and, you know, the work that they put in. But because he was hunted down by his own, see, he was hunted down by his own people. And the fact that most of them he had trained, so he knew what kind of mindset they had. He knew they had all pretty much come out of prison. And to me, it was just a harrowing um, thought as I grew older. And I, I just remember a big, tall, tall, redhead man. You know, my brothers can remember a lot more than me, of course. But um, 
I remember when he passed away, I just remember my father freaking out. And my father began to change, um, um, if I could be real about the whole situation. Um, and I don't know how much longer, not very much, that he ran Muslim Mosque Incorporated because, of course, um, you know, it folded. But um, it tried to stay afloat, and it just couldn't. And there had there was just so much in the in the air, in the atmosphere. Uh, the gases had changed, and they to a just a, just a dark cloud. And um, so I don't need to go into what happened and who did it. Y'all already know. Um, what's the what's the brother's name? Joseph. Y'all already know. Um, and the and the FOI member who was responsible. So Thomas Halyard. We don't have to get into all that because. What I feel is more progressive this day is that lawsuit that might help provide some answers about Malcolm X's assassination. I, I keep my ears peeled to the, um, I keep my ears, you know, peeled to The airways, you know, trying to keep up with this, I, you know, th whether it's through the PBS News Hour or whatever. As a matter of fact, here is a clip from the PBS News Hour. So, a fair use. Our masterpiece. Um, I want y'all to check out this little clip. It's not very long, but um, this is where we're at with this, and I just hope I just hope that New York City Police Department is held accountable, is sued. of the assassination of Malcolm X. Since that day, 58 years and they get ago, paid. there have been many difficult and painful questions about who may have been involved in his murder and what led to it. This week, Malcolm X's family took new action, announcing their intent to sue several federal and local government agencies for allegedly concealing evidence about what happened. We want justice served for our father. Malcolm X's daughter, Ilyasa Shabazz, still searching for answers decades after his assassination. At a press conference this week, Shabazz, surrounded by family and civil rights attorney Ben Crump, announced plans to file a $100 million wrongful death lawsuit against the NYPD, the CIA, FBI, and other government agencies. For years, our family has fought for the truth to come to light concerning his murder, and we'd like our father to receive the justice that he deserves. They allege a conspiracy in connection with Malcolm X's murder and a subsequent cover-up of evidence. The truth about the circumstances leading to the death of our father is important, not only to his family, but to many followers, many admirers, many who look to him for guidance, for love. On February 21st, 1965, Malcolm X was killed in a hail of bullets just as he was about to give a speech in the Audubon Ballroom in Harlem as his pregnant wife and children ducked for safety. He was 39 years old. Three men were arrested and convicted of the crime. In November 2021, after decades of doubt surrounding the case and following the release of the Netflix documentary, Who Killed Malcolm X?, the Manhattan District Attorney reopened the case. Two men who were convicted of murdering Malcolm X in 1966 were exonerated after serving decades in prison, and the district attorney admitted that the FBI and NYPD at the time withheld evidence. The New York Police Department, the FBI, the district attorney of New York had factual evidence 
exculpatory evidence that they fraudulently concealed from the men who were wrongfully convicted for the assassination of Malcolm X. And they also fraudulently concealed that information, most importantly, from the family of Malcolm X. The FBI, CIA, and NYPD did not respond to the news hours' requests for comment. The lawsuit could help put to rest decades of controversy and conspiracy theories that have swirled in the more than 50 years since his assassination. Leading Malcolm X historian, Abdur Rahman Muhammad, sees the suit as the culmination of years of work investigating the assassination. I'm extremely gratified and really had no way of knowing uh, going into this that it would culminate in such a spectacular victory. Uh, I think it's unprecedented in U.S. history that that's ever happened, and I'm extremely grateful and gratified to have lived long enough to see this day. As for Malcolm X's family, they say they want their father to receive the justice he deserves. I'm very, um, this week marked, I'm very, um, thankful for that, that, um, that lawsuit against the FBI, the CIA, you know, and these are the organizations that are, uh, raffled with corruption. That's why it kills me when you have a loose cannon like Donald Trump, and I don't, well, I gotta make it political, cause that's what it is. Those are the, those are the things. You know, even the wrong clock is right twice a day, right? And as crazy as I know Donald Trump is, I know that he speaks the truth. And I also know, without the racism that he spews, a lot of the stuff that he says is so on point. And he came to turn and stir all that stuff up, and I welcome that. Because the CIA, the FBI were responsible for a lot of assassinations um, that happened in um, not only the black community, the larger community um, as a whole. <laughs> International, um, there's a book called, um, uh, uh, what is it, the, the, the Diary of a, a Hitman, and it is so... A political hit. What is the name of that book? Good gracious. Um, anyway, it's about how the United States go into all these countries and stuff and use strong men and, you know, assassinate the leadership and, you know, take over. And, and his job was to do those deals. So when we look at entities that, you know, that they want to be respected, like, the CIA and the FBI, their hands is dirty and dripping with blood, especially with uh, the people that were directly affected by these people. You think the Kennedy family don't know what's up with the FBI and really want to shake? They know about that organization, okay? They also know uh, that they assassinated their loved one. Because you get out of line and that program start costing, then you got to go. I mean, it's just really that simple. But I, I'm i going to um, keep continuing to follow. Um, I'm going to find out from Elisa actually how far they are getting with this um, lawsuit. You know, because all you can do is just uh, reach out. And hopefully, uh, and pray that you know it really gets gets some teeth sunk into it. You know what I'm saying? Because, like I said, most of us who grew up in the '60s, we are so trauma damn tired that I, you know, those of us who survived are still alive right now, and especially those of us whose parents put in work. Okay, and I ain't talking about, you know, I'm talking about who really put in work where they had to get it every time they hear the doorbell ring or when the uh, 
police come to the door. They knew how to hit the floor and get under the bed. I'm talking about all the kids that grew up like that. And there's a lot of us, especially in Milwaukee, okay, because Milwaukee was so segregated then, and it's the fourth wackest place for black people today. It's still the most segre- one of the most segregated cities in the United States. And yes, Malcolm did live here part of his childhood. His whole family lived over on 4th and Garfield. Okay, um, when his dad was a Garveyite. So, but the city of Milwaukee has a lot of history with Malcolm um, and the, the, the racist place. Malcolm, unbelievably, to a, a, a lot of people, that's, that's kind of like what shaped him because there's a lot of white people here in Milwaukee. And it's a very segregated place. And it's just that simple. Um, I can't think of the basketball player. I believe that's why, listen, that's why they shipped him out. Don't don't mix it with the sports when it come here. You can't be outspoken here and say anything. That's why the jab had to get out of here. He couldn't take it. And when I say the jab, I mean a Kareem Abdul-Jabbar. Okay. He had to get out of here. He couldn't believe what was happening here in Milwaukee. Okay, and Milwaukee is proud of it. We the only city go around talking about Milwaukee books, but black people can't even afford to go to the games, hardly, unless they sell dope. (laughs) Y'all might say that's everywhere, but no, it's not. Not when I look at Atlanta. Not when I see some of these other cities in USA and I see a mixed crowd, a crowd that represents America, a crowd that represents what it looked like to really live in America. It's a melting pot. Shh. You come to Milwaukee, you think it's, people think all we do is a bowl, have barbecue brats and beer because of the, it is a lot of alcoholics here, I tell you. No, I'm, all the breweries moved out. They moved over to St. Louis, so we don't manufacture. I think Miller's the only one still here, but we don't manufacture beer like we used to. We used to be the beer grog capital of the world, okay? So, but what I'm saying is, um, I don't want to get, I've digressed. I don't want to go too far off the subject, but this day, 59 years ago is when um, Malcolm X was assassinated. And I hope no matter what you're doing today, you can just take one minute and thank him for the sacrifices that he made, even in his unawareness of how deep the rabbit hole went until it was too late. Also say a prayer for the black community because we're doing the same shit now that we were doing then killing each other so i don't want to hear all that this is just something started no back then it was just like a religious type of gangsterism today it's just street fellas same stuff they they went to jail from the streets came religious the so-called religious and then they killed a brother with the help of course of the New York Police Department and all the other conspirators. So as you go today, have a remembrance of Malcolm and pray for his family. Um, because that 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 had that that had to be one of the worst. Every time I think about that and the emotion that my dad had, and uh, you know, as a kid, I was crying. You see your parents upset, crying. You cry. And I remember my siblings and I crying, like, you know, I, 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 I can feel it to this day. So any of y'all that was alive back then, I want to know, why don't y'all leave a comment? Tell me what it felt like to be a part of this part of history. And if, are you one of the children that were traumatized? Because in the kids that grew up in the 60s, we are completely freaking, uh, Completely freaking 
just traumatized from assassinations of leadership that we saw on TV. And that's when it was in America that, damn, it ain't, it ain't like you think. <laughs> it ain't sweet like that. So I want to hear y'all opinion. Tell me what y'all think. Tell me what you was doing. Tell me how long you've been a member of the channel. And um, I'm going to see you all in the next video. Thank you.